Okay, so we want to take a look at the Euler line here. Um, we had already discussed the three centers of a triangle. One was the orthocenter, then we had the centroid, and then we had the circumcenter. So it turns out that all three of these centers of triangles actually lie in the same line. And yep, you guessed it, that line is called the Euler line. All right, so we what we have here is you have your orthocenter, your centroid, and your circumcenter. They all lie in the same line. This line is called the Euler line. And um, these three points, the three centers of the triangle, you would say they're collinear. And what collinear means is they just lie in the same line. There's also a, a connection between their distances. So it turns out that the distance from, let's say, your orthocenter to your centroid is twice the distance from your centroid to your circumcenter. Right, so you have an exactly a two to one ratio going on here between the centers of triangles. So centroid and circumcenter are always closer together, uh, whereas the centroid and orthocenter are always farther apart. And the centroid always lies in the middle. What would the Euler line look like if we had an equilateral triangle? Well, if you have an equilateral triangle, uh, let's label our vertices A, B, C. Let's suppose I want to calculate my altitude line. My altitude line for vertice A goes from the ver vertice A down to the opposite side at 90 degrees. But because this is an equilateral triangle, this is going to meet it at the midpoint. So yes, this is an altitude line that I've drawn here. It, by definition, it's an altitude line. Right? And again, if you don't know the def if you don't know what an altitude line is, I'll link a video in the top right. You can check it out. Alright, by definition, it goes from the vertice to the opposite side at 90 degrees, but it is also a median line. And the reason for that is it goes from the vertice to the opposite side at the midpoint. So therefore, it's also a median line. But not only is it a median line, it is also a perpendicular bisector because it goes from the, it goes from the midpoint of line segment BC to the opposite side. It just so happens that it cuts through the vertice, but the definition of a perpendicular bisector of line segment BC is a line that's perpendicular to line segment BC and crosses at the midpoint. It just so happens to go through the vertice, but that doesn't def that doesn't define perpendicular bisector. But therefore, it is still a perpendicular bisector. So this is the perpendicular bisector as well. So therefore, what we have here is this line is an altitude line, a median line, and a perpendicular bisector, right? And the same argument applies to let's say altitude line B. This too would have the added property of being all three of these. It would be an altitude line, it would be a median line, it would be a perpendicular bisector. Which means that when I intersect these two lines here, this point here, since it is the intersection of altitude lines, this point is the orthocenter. But since it's intersection of median lines, you guessed it, it's also the centroid. And lastly, uh, it is also the circumcenter. Okay, so when you have an equilateral triangle, the orthocenter, centroid, and circumcenter are actually all equal. They're all the same point, and therefore the Euler line in this case would not exist. Okay, let's take a look at right angle triangles and how that would affect your Euler line. Again, uh, we've got our right angle triangle ABC. This line segment here, this would be altitude line A. And the reason for this, it goes from vertice A to the opposite side at 90 degrees. Likewise, this is altitude line C because it goes from vertice C to the opposite side at 90 degrees. And therefore, this point right here is my orthocenter. Okay, now if I want to go ahead and calculate the circumcenter, the circumcenter is the intersection of your perpendicular bisectors. So if I calculate my perpendicular bisector of AB, you're going to go from the midpoint of AB and you're going to go across, and this is going to be your perpendicular bisector. Now, if I calculate my perpendicular bisector of BC, you're going to go from the midpoint of BC, and you're going to go up. Now, I'm claiming that this point of intersection is right in the hypotenuse. To see why that's true here, notice that um, if this measure right here has one tick, this will be one. If this is two, this is two. Therefore, what we have here is this right angle triangle, right? This is right angle as well. 
uh, this right angle triangle right here and this right angle triangle right here are the same right angle triangle, meaning that these lengths here must all be the same. So it's because of that, the point of intersection between these two must be on the hypotenuse. And not only must it be on the hypotenuse, this point must be the midpoint of AC because the, the hypotenuses are the same. So therefore, when you intersect two perpendicular bisectors, that intersection point lies on the midpoint of the hypotenuse is going to be your circumcenter. So if you go ahead and try to draw your Euler line, it's going to go somewhere between these values here. We've got here is my circumcenter, here is my orthocenter, and then my centroid is lying somewhere in between, um, probably right around this area here. And this would be your Euler line. Okay, that concludes uh, the Euler line here. Uh, so I got special cases uh, explained for the right angle triangles, for equilateral triangles, and then just some general properties. Remember, the centroid lies in the middle, and it's um, twice as far away from the orthocenter as it is the circumcenter. All three of these centers lie in the same line. They're collinear, and that line is called the Euler line.